Hey folks, Sega Sonic fan here, and today I'm on a mission to learn more about AC line voltage protection circuits. Surge protectors, transient voltage suppressors. Uh, at the time of this video, I may or may not have published it, but I made another video on this guy, which I got off of Amazon. These are all over the place, uh, you know, with a different company name usually. And um, was curious as to how much protection this actually offered um and it's got all these certification ratings but you gotta wonder if those are actually real because uh ul certifications usually have kind of a holographic sticker on them as well and uh, i've also got this one i took apart from uh 1991 look at that to uh look at the older styles uh of protection that were done. And then I recently just bought this brand new uh, Belkin 12 AC outlet surge protector. Um, and this was like $35, 35, 40 bucks, which was a little more than I wanted to spend, but I want this to go on my main, uh, protect on my bench supply equipment. And so, you know, I figured I'd, I'd see what the differences were. So this was about 30, 40 bucks. This was $12 on the Amazon. And uh, screw Amazon, by the way. I don't like Amazon, but sometimes I gotta buy stuff there. And uh, this was the, uh, this, this of course, I don't really know the price it's from the 90s, who knows. But um, yeah, I, think this, th I thought this would be interesting to make a video about because uh, I did some digging and this stuff isn't the easiest to find information on. And I was super curious at the designs that I was finding. When I took these apart, I did not find what I was expecting to find. And so I figured I'd take you all on a little tour um, into how these work and kind of the research I've been doing. So the heart of a surge protector, and this is of course not, an, not a power strip, not just having a bunch of outlets, but to actually protect them. The heart of that is these guys, which are usually blue or green. Um, it's a metal oxide varistor, and it's an electrical component that essentially is designed to absorb power surges. Um, and basically when the voltage goes over a particular threshold, it's designed to suppress it from going higher by absorbing that energy. Um, and so they all have like a joules rating that you can usually find when the manufacturer is advertising these things. Now, um, because they absorb that energy, um, they can, of course, burn up, you know, they can catch fire. And um, so traditionally, or I don't know if this is traditional or not, correctly, I should say, they should have some uh, protection for that, and at the very least, a fuse. Um, but what I'm finding with these cheaper ones, like, uh, like this guy over here, there's a lot of emphasis, of course, on these ones on the USB, you know, 4.0 eight amps total and it's like you know that's nice it's nice to have usb but hey what about actually protecting my wall my my electronics which is like kind of why i'm buying it um which you'll find uh, there's a couple couple concerning things you'll find um but first before i jump into that let me just explain what's going on here there's three metal oxide varistors and what's happening is you've got your your line i forget which is line and neutral in the wiring color scheme here but you got oh here it is labeled you get your neutral you got your line you got your ground and so there's, there's uh, basically a metal oxide varistor across the line and the, and the neutral, and then one for each to the ground. And that provides a little bit of extra protection. It's cool there's three of them and not just one across the line. Um, additionally, there's uh, capacitors here, and I'm not sure what the purpose is for those, maybe smoothing out the voltage a little bit. Um, probably, um, related to these guys, though, which are essentially uh, light bulbs, <laughs> uh, from what I could tell. Um, I don't think they're meant to be any kind of fuse. I think what they're, they're, they're kind of a dual purpose light bulb fuse, which is a little bit clever. And so I think the capacitance helps them from blowing too easily. But uh, if there's a significant surge, like you see with this guy, it's just supposed to blow up. And uh, this one's indicating, this was the ground indicator. So you've got your ground coming in, there's a resistor, goes to the light bulb, which is going to the line. And so obviously if there's an issue with the ground not being present, this won't light up. And then uh, this guy's from, uh, 
we look at it, this is from the line. And then it goes down here and it's got a resistor to the neutral over here. And so that's it. Um, what's interesting to note though is while well, this is burned up, and I'm assuming it's from a, a spike, but maybe it's just from age. Although looking at how black it is, it's probably a spike. Um, I should also double check and make sure that this isn't the color that it always was. I mean, that's really uniformly black. Um, I would I would think that's from a spike though. Anyway, uh, you can see none of these metal oxide varistors are actually uh, appear to look damaged. Um, mm, this is maybe this one. I can't tell if it's gunk or if it's damaged. No, it's just a little gunk. Um, so anyway, um, but the concerning part is not that. Uh, the concerning part is one, there's no fuse in here at all. So in a best case scenario with a huge power surge, this will just catch fire. <laughs> uh, not your ideal scenario. Uh, two, the other really concerning thing, and this is a pattern I'm seeing in these cheaper ones, truly really sucks, is that your input is really, the high current path is directly to your output jacks. And the MOVs are kind of just added on here in parallel. Um, and it's fine that they're in parallel, but the they're kind of off to the side with these thin wires. And so, you know, your high current paths are gonna travel a lot faster than these MOVs. And these MOVs should absorb some of that energy, but uh, it's really not a great design from what I could tell. You should really have these MOVs um, kind of like across here essentially, so that they have to traverse the parallel circuit of the MOV before going to your output. This is your output. Um, but of course that would be, make this larger and a little more board space and such. So they're kind of doing a cheat by just kind of adding this on here. And that's the same thing that this guy did. Um, so this guy uh, basically takes your input here, it ties it directly through high current wires to all four of those jacks, and then has a protection circuit going to this jack, which is actually fused. This is the only one that actually seems to be really protected. Now on the plus side, there's a gas discharge tube and a TVS diode in here and a fuse. So this particular jack is actually really well protected. It's just, I'm not sure the other ones are protected much at all. And so it's very misleading that the manual says that this is a five port uh, protected outlet. It's also a little strange that it doesn't have the um, UL listed sticker, even though it says conforms to UL. I guess it says conforms to UL, so maybe it's not inspected by UL. I don't know what the deal is with that. Um, the nice thing about this, of course, is the USB outputs, uh, which has a really chunky uh, transformer and a bunch of stuff for that. Uh, it's an interesting example of what happens when consumers are not aware of what's actually happening in their electronics. And so they're driving the development of fancier USB ports rather than actual circuit protection. It's kind of interesting. Because, you know, you don't really know until something breaks and that might never happen, you know, depending on what's going on. And so for a manufacturer to develop uh, higher, you know, to contribute more cost in that direction, it just doesn't make any sense for them. So that's why I'm making this video partly to inform people of what they should be looking for. So the last thing is this uh, this Belkin guy. And like I said, I made another video tearing this down. I'll, I'll maybe post that later. But this Belkin, um, I was curious to get because it's, you know, double the cost of the other one. And um, it's a name brand. It came with a warranty. The warranty has a bunch of stipulations, of course. Um, but, you know, I don't really trust the warranty a lot, but it's something, right? And uh, so that gives me some encouragement that there's actually real stuff going on in here. And I was curious to find out if it's just if it's just a logo printed on here or if it's actually better. Um, by the way, one of the things that really sucks about working on these is finding ways to take them apart. Not so easy because they always have protection screws and stuff, uh, security screws and, and other stuff to keep you from getting inside to AC main circuits, which is a good thing. Don't try this at home, kids. This is uh, dangerous stuff. If you make any mistakes or short anything. And so we look in here, we've got all our outlets in rows. And at first I looked at this and I was like, ah, oh, this is the same thing. They're just uh, connecting all the outlets together. And um, well, not, not exactly. So it's true that if you have something plugged in that has a problem uh, short of its own, it will immediately short out whatever is 
on this on this uh, line. Um, and so it won't protect your your devices if your device has its own problem, its own short. And I did have that happen once. I had a PS2, the original PST, sorry, not the original, the original Slim PS2, TWO. Uh, those power supplies were recalled, but before that happened, um, mine uh, shorted out and blew out my really nice Nakamichi Japanese audio amplifier. It was a very sad day. I was very upset about that. And that's actually a fault of both of those manufacturers because it turns out my Nakamichi did not have a fuse for the mains uh, transformer, which is very dumb. Uh, anyway, looking at this guy though, what's going on here? We got these little white bags and stuff. Well, actually, gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. Pretty impressed, Belkin. So what we've got going on here, first of all, is nice thick wires coming in. And we've got um, uh, an inductor, which is, is working in combination with this very large capacitor to just kind of smooth out the input voltage um, from, from, you know, micro transients and stuff, which is really nice. Um, and then after that, we've got the main crux of these, which is basically how they all are, which is metal oxide varistors. And these are all just metal oxide varistors under here. Same thing. Um, however, you'll notice there's a lot more of them, and they're wrapped not only in Kapton tape, which is a thermally resistive tape. By the way, Kapton's the brand. It's actually called polyamide. Um, so they're in thermally resistant polyamide, and then also have these really nice kind of flame suppressant protectors over them. Pretty nice. But wait, there's more. Um, this works as a resettable fuse as a trip circuit. It's this little circuit breaker type deal, I believe. I believe that's how these work. Um, it's not just a on and off switch. Um, and so I believe, yeah, I believe this is a resettable fuse in here. And, and additionally, we have what's labeled here, F1. This is also a fuse with a large resistor. And I believe, um, it could be that that's just the fuse, but I'm, I'm sort of theorizing that it actually goes to um, the uh, the LED indicator. I could be wrong about that. But I don't want to take this board out and I have, you have to disassemble everything to get to the bottom of this board. Um, and I think it really stands to reason, um, instead of doing that, that in fact the, the wires coming in here, the black coming in here, this circuit is very much before it goes to your output jacks. The parallel circuit, it has to travel um, in the parallel circuit of the MOVs before going to your devices, which is really how it should be and is not at all the case in these smaller ones. Again, the difference, uh, it travels directly to all your equipment with this kind of just hanging off the side. It really should have the MOVs across here. And that's what you're seeing in the Belkin. Um, aside from that, we've got, uh, you know, typical North American style plugs, encapsulated with plastic, you know, nothing too fancy, should do the job. Here's your ground here. You know, it's a little loose, but uh, that's, a, that's not a big deal. Um, you know, typical like brass material or whatever. And uh, all your wires look very, I mean, you have nice, really thick copper wires and they're all crimped on here essentially, or they're either spot welded or crimped. Um, looks like they might be kind of spot welded actually. And um, that's great because that means that they're, they're not just relying on the solder, although this one in the very end is soldered. Um, that's okay because it's a lower current path, looks like. Um, and this one is soldered as well, but it's also curved into the opening of... So yeah, there's a mechanical and a, a very strong mechanical connection for the wiring, uh, which means that if there's a thermal condition, it won't just melt the solder and kind of fall off, which you really don't want, of course, with an AC circuit. And uh, yeah, really, really strong mechanical connections. Um, and just really thick wire. I'm actually really impressed with... Uh, the quality of the wiring in here. They, they could have uh, cut some corners with that and they didn't. Very cool. And then lastly, we've got our little 2.1 amp USB. And so the, 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 the funny thing about this is of course, 
this has a much crappier USB charging output. And clearly this is kind of the afterthought of the design as it should be, really. Um, although it's not too shabby. You've got your little nice little transformer there. It looks like a good, decent circuit board design. It's actually a double layer, uh, double sided PCB, which is surprising in a, in a surge protector like this. Um, and uh, yeah, it actually has its own MOV. Look at that. It's got its own little MOV. Looks like right in here. Little mini guy. And some nice bolt capacitance, capacitors there. I mean, it actually doesn't look too shabby. If it's going to give you only 2.1, it's going to do a good job of it at least. Um, I got to say, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm really quite impressed. And uh, the other components, by the way, that you're seeing here, which is like the fuses and transistors and stuff, I'm uh, fairly certain that that's just to, and there's some diodes which are likely forming a half bridge, um, are just to help with the, indi the indicator LEDs, uh, just to provide some DC voltage for those guys. So yeah, gotta say, pretty pretty darn impressed with the Belkin, not at all regretting my the higher purchase price now. Um, and I will feel confident that this is actually gonna do a, a decent job with uh, the stuff on my bench. Um, I do have a trip light UPS I'm gonna try repairing. Um, UPSs are supposed to be even a little better because they do more kind of signal conditioning um, and uh, of course provide backup power if you need it. Um, but uh, this, this is really cool. This is really cool and just shows that uh, sometimes you really do get your money's worth and it really does depend on, you know, having a brand with a warranty and all that stuff actually makes a difference. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. So yeah, folks, um, it pays to learn more about this stuff, literally, because you could really be damaging your equipment. Uh, one thing that I've learned in my research is that uh, voltage spikes in AC power lines happen all the time, sometimes, you know, hundreds of times a day or a week. And uh, they're micro surges that will just wear out your equipment over time. A lot of equipment, you know, you have your, you know, you have your separate power supply that's doing the AC to DC conversion. So it might not matter that much if you're not attached to the AC portion of your electronics, say like a computer or something. Um, they recommend these a lot for computers, but if your computer has a power supply you don't care about, then whatever, you know, whatever's doing the AC DC conversion is probably not that big of a deal, I would think. I would think a surge wouldn't actually show up on the DC side for the most part. Could be wrong about that. Um, in my experience though, what is extremely important is equipment like your television, especially like if you have a CRT or in my case, like my Nakamichi amplifier, your audio amplifier, which has a big bulky AC transformer. So specifically audio is where you really want to focus on getting nice surge protectors. And of course, like what I'm using this for, bench equipment. Some of my bench equipment, like my oscilloscope and such, does have big beefy AC DC converters inside that are not easy to replace. And I would not want those to blow up. So hopefully this video was useful to you all. And um, yeah, feel free to leave a message if you found something interesting or you have a question or you want to correct something. Uh, I'm, I'm, this is not my area of expertise uh, in doing AC circuits, but it's something I'm learning more about. And uh, it's been very interesting. I don't care if you like, I don't care if you subscribe as always, just make these videos to help people. Have fun uh, protecting your valuable electronics. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out.